good? All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice chilly morning after a couple 70 degree days and now it's snowing again, but you know, thankful to be here this morning and another opportunity to be in worship with all of you. Some new faces that I haven't seen this morning and that's a good thing. So this morning, if you're able, let's be standing and, uh, if you're able, uh, open with a word of prayer and then, uh, Vicki has a song for us. So. Just all pray out together this morning. We're going to let her speak before we do all the singing and everything. She's here from Elizabeth Hope. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. All right. Let's just all pray out together this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here this morning, Lord. We just thank you for another opportunity to be in your house, Lord. And we're just thankful for all those that are here this morning, Lord. We just ask that you be with all of us, Lord, that are here this morning and open our hearts and our minds, Lord, to those that are here. That we will do your will, Lord. We see with those that are not able to be here this morning, a couple of them already have had to leave because they didn't feel well, Lord. Just give them a touch this morning, Lord, and be with them and keep them strong throughout the week ahead, Lord. We just ask all these things, dear Heavenly Father, in your precious and holy name. Amen. Okay, I apologize. I didn't know. Oh, no, that's okay. Uh, you want to come on up and uh, we're going to do that before the singing, you said? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I, I no, actually didn't good. introduce, I introduced myself when I came into the church earlier, but I actually didn't say I'm with Elizabeth Hope. So I thought maybe you guys saw I didn't show because I didn't say who I was. I'm a little scatterbrained. Thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm with the Elizabeth Hope here in Waverly, um, doing who knows what that is. Not, not a whole lot, some of you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'd like to start off with a little bit about myself. Um, I'm a mom of four. We got the twins there, uh, Asher and Devin, and then I have my daughter and the grand finale, Josiah. He's a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I, uh, with the job that I do, I see God uh, move in tremendous ways, and um, it's just such a blessing. Um, so I will get into explaining exactly what Elizabeth's Hope is here in just a moment. But I was first introduced to Elizabeth's Hope in uh, May of 2010. Um, I was a client with them. I uh, had just found out that we were going to be having twins, and I didn't know how to take care of one baby, let alone two. Um, so I um, heard about their programs there and I got with them and um, I was shocked to find out how much the organization did for the community. At the time, um, I was living a life of sin and I found myself dealing with a high-risk pregnancy and the doctors were telling me that more than likely we weren't going to be bringing home either baby alive. And there is not a day that goes by that I did not thank the Lord that they were wrong. Yes, amen. Because of God's grace and the prayers from churches around us and, and prayers from the people at Elizabeth's Hope, they were wrong. And they were able to come home um, about two weeks after they were born. They were very early. Um, but it was just, God saved me through that. You know, I didn't know what I was doing with my life. Like I said, you know, we weren't living a very good life, a life of sin. And it almost killed me. <laughs> They very well could not have made it, but God worked Thanks it all God. out, and thank you for that. Praise God. So, um, at the time, I was shocked to find something in the community that they taught you how to be a good mom. They helped you with supplies along the way. Um, sometime after that, I think it was about six years later, I started volunteering at Elizabeth's Hope, and somehow I'm now managing down there. So, so some background on Elizabeth's Hope. It was originally started in Pickaway County in 1990, and it was called the Pickaway Women's Center. And since that time, God has grown it into a total of five structure locations, and there's also a mobile unit that drives around between the um, five locations, and they offer pregnancy testing and ultrasounds for free. We also recently opened up Mercy Home, uh, which is a... Kind of like a shelter it provides mentorship toward self-sufficiency for mothers who are in need 
so basically if we get um, someone in our uh, client base or in the community that um, is homeless and they're pregnant, um, we're able to give them somewhere to stay and kind of help them get on their feet and uh, things like that. The name Elizabeth's Hope comes from a Bible story. I'm sure most of you here know it. It was when Mary was pregnant with baby Jesus. Can you imagine what it was like at that time? A young girl who was betrothed to a man and she became pregnant, not by her husband-to-be. In those times, she could have been brought before the town and stoned for such a thing. She must have had these moments when she was afraid, when she didn't know what to do, when things might have seemed overwhelming. So the Bible tells us in the first chapter of Luke that Mary left on a journey to visit her cousin Elizabeth. And when she arrived at Elizabeth's house, that she greeted her cousin and the baby that was within Elizabeth's womb leaped within her and she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. As you continue to read the rest of that story, you find that Elizabeth encouraged young Mary, and she was a positive voice in Mary's life. She was a woman in crisis pregnancy, and she comforted her and gave her hope. And that is exactly what Elizabeth's hope is about. Mm -hmm. Giving hope and encouragement to women contemplating their options in difficult situations. Providing them with the help and the hope that they need to choose life and be the best mother that they were created to be. You want to close your eyes for just a moment and put yourself in the shoes of a young woman in today's world where the importance of life is not held to as high of a standard. And as the days go on, the world is pushing God aside more and more. Mm -hmm. You find yourself in a moment of desperation and not sure what tomorrow will bring. Mm -hmm. You doubt yourself and you have no support and you're struggling with what to do. How much of a difference would it make if you had a friend? that encouraged you like Elizabeth had encouraged Mary. Someone who showed you support when nobody else did. Someone who prayed for you, someone who prayed with you. This is a dark and confusing world and Elizabeth's hope wants to be a light and a positive voice during these struggles. At Elizabeth's Hope we have a few different programs. Um, the main one is our mom's program. Um, we have clients come in once a week and they basically get education from us and while they're doing that they kind of earn baby bucks and they can take these baby bucks and um, <coughs> apply them to things they need car seats cribs um, blankets um, diapers wipes like anything you would need for a baby um, we also have emergency services so if anyone in the community needed something anyone at all um, they could come in and we could provide them with emergency diapers wipes clothes um, Usually if I've got it in there, I'll hand it out. I'm not going to let no one go without if I've got it. So We also have a dad's program. It's, it's like the mom's program. It's just geared toward the dad's side, how to be a good father, things like that, how to lead the family. Um, currently, I don't have a, um, a gentleman on our volunteer uh, staff to help lead that. So if anyone's praying about it and they think, yeah, I think I might be interested in that, contact us. <laughs> We could always have these volunteers. A lot of people um, label us as a place that just gives diapers and wipes. And those are things that we do help with. But we're so much more. We are also a women's center. We mentor in areas that empower women with education involving relationships, unhealthy boundaries. We mentor with life skills that range from being healthy all the way up to managing finances, choosing a path for their future. Uh, we can help with overcoming trauma, such as healing from abuse or pregnancy loss, healing from abortion even. We mentor in parenting difficult children, and I, that has been very helpful to me. <laughs> and the best part is that Christ is centered throughout all of it, because at Elizabeth's Hope, we know that God is the answer. Mm -hmm. And we are thankful for our churches and donors like you guys who have helped to make our ministry possible. You're a major part of the hope in Elizabeth's Hope. Elizabeth's Hope has served over 50,000 women and their families. I have seen your donations make a difference. You have assisted us in clothing and feeding babies while making a difference in the lives of the families that come to us. Um, like I said earlier, volunteers, we could always use them. So if any of this that I have said has spoken to you or pulled on your heart, or maybe you just need a friend, I encourage you to reach out to us. Um, so, to date, 
Mount Zion CCCU has donated a total of four hundred and seventy-five dollars and sixty-three cents. Sixty-three cents. And the years you guys had donated that I have on record is 2016, 17, and 18. So if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them for you. You want to tell where your location is? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, so we are now located um, up on 23. If anyone knows where the sheriff's station is, mm -hmm. if you pull in there, I mean, it's right across. Like, I could step out my doors and look straight across at their doors. We're the safest pregnancy center in the world, so sorry about the sheriff's station. <laughs> but I have some pamphlets and things that I'll leave that has our address on it. Um, I believe your church has decided to do the baby bottles this mm -hmm. year. Um, so how that usually works is everybody takes a bottle, or you can take two if you feel groggy. And um, you just fill it with loose change over the next few weeks. Uh, usually about 12 weeks is what we give. Um, some churches like to keep them longer. And like you could you could put hundred dollar bills in there if you want it, but we just say change. <laughs> so and then you just turn it in, even if it's not all the way full, um, to your church, and you guys can call me. I can come pick them up, or someone can drop them or off we at can the center. Drop them off, yeah. And then um, that's that. And a lot of do people you are have, like, oh well. Do you have the bottles with you today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, brought, I think I brought twenty. Okay. So. Take two. Yeah. Well, we'll just, after the service, then we'll just pick them up. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> now I feel silly asking. If you did anything to help someone this week. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Well. I just sit there and the phone and stuff and talk to people a little bit. All right, thank you very much. That is um, a, a very, very amazing program. Um, as I was listening to her speak, I can imagine, and I'm close to my daughter, but I can imagine that there's sometimes that if our kids mess up, they feel like they can't come to us. If, and if they know that that resource is available, they might be more willing to reach out to a stranger than they ever would someone in your own household. Yeah. So we just want to make sure that uh, our loved ones are aware of that service, and it is an amazing service. I know um, Becky Zaffaro, I don't know if she's still affiliated with that or not, but she lived years ago, and she used to go into the schools and speak, and um, she was an amazing lady. I love Becky. So There's no age or financial limit on any of it. It's just completely yeah. for anybody. Absolutely. And it is very important that we support the men in that, too. Um, it's going to be scary for young dads or... Yeah, that situation. So, be but this amazed at times. Um, like I actually did the dad's program for a while when I was in another job, and uh, a young man I actually got to see through it. I'd known for a long time, and his father died the same day his son was born. So we were the first person to reach out to because he didn't have family. So we saw pictures of his newborn son pretty well the day of his birth, and uh, you know, still to this day he'll reach out occasionally. We saw him yesterday at the store. Baby's doing great healthy as can be and just uh, smiles but you know you never know God just puts you in the lives of others just at the time they need it sometimes so. right. absolutely amen Vicki you got a song for us I do <laughs> <coughs> we have our own miracle here like I said earlier we have the, the twins that come to church here and we've watched them grow up. We've seen God bless them in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I was just talking to somebody the other day and I said that those children are so loved and so blessed. They have grandparents that absolutely adore them. Amen. They have parents that would support them in any situation. Not everybody has that. That's right. I wish they did. But praise the Lord. Now I feel kind of silly going through my lesson this morning talking about doing God's services. And then I find out you're from Elizabeth's Hope and I think, <laughs> Vicki, you're preaching to the choir here. 286, he brought me out. Amen. Praise God.
rock that I lean on sometimes. Praise the Lord. Bless the Lord. She's just a little winded. They, uh, her and Cheryl and Cheryl were at the ladies' retreat Friday night, and she's not quite recuperated. That's all it is, right? I'm older than they are. We were, <laughs> we were hooting and hollering. That's why. And I was good. Praise awesome. the Lord. I'm sure that was an amazing time. It was. All right. By way of announcements, um, is it Tuesday? Sunday cleaning. If you're able, Tuesday we're going to come and uh, spruce up the church by about nine. Oh, you're going to do it during the day? Yeah. Oh, well, that puts me on because I go back to work Tuesday. So, But if you're able and you're off on Tuesday at 9 o'clock in the morning, um, we are going to give the tur church a little touch up and spruce up because Friday evening at 7 we start our revival. Amen. And we're very excited about that to have Brother Aaron Satterfield here Friday and Saturday evening. And the, then on uh, Sunday morning we'll have Dave Rusa with the Satterfield, Satterfield Boys being here all three days. So... Let's be in prayer about that. The sign-up sheet back there for the dinner, the church is providing chicken and noodles and ham. But if you want to bring anything for the potluck after Sunday service, um, there's so a sign-up. Sunday will be a combined service, correct? Don't we do that on revival? We don't have Sunday school? Well, we didn't discuss that, and she put on the flyer 11 o'clock, so... Yeah, I guess okay. we'll have Sunday school. Okay. I didn't I really didn't pay attention to that, but yeah. so we will have Sunday school on Sunday morning at ten and then at eleven we'll have a uh, revival worship service will start and then after that we'll have our dinner. Yeah. And uh, if you couldn't hear Cheryl, the church will be providing the ham and chicken and noodles. So um if you can sign up for a side dish or so we got an idea of what we have. So we'll be inviting out for that. <laughs> Kevin said dessert. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bring dessert. You know, yeah, we've gotten way too hooked on desserts while I'm home. This last three weeks has been a struggle. So, um, And then we have uh, this Wednesday evening, we will not be doing our Jeremiah Bible study. It will be an evening of an hour of prayer that we will focus on our revival coming up. And uh, yeah. So if you're able to be here, let's be here for that Wednesday, uh, Wednesday at 7. So. Does anybody have a song or a testimony? I know Cheryl's got a song. Does anybody have a testimony while she makes her way back up here? Y'all been good to anybody this week? One I can say. Amen. Every day. All right. You want over here? Bless her, Lord. I love the Lord, and I'm so thankful for his blessings and the privilege I had to um, be a part of the women's retreat. The devil fought before I left, and I just gave everything to the Lord and even anointed the person that was giving me the trouble okay. with oil. Okay. And um, it was okay. It was okay. And I praise the Lord for that. I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Bless the Lord.
offer it up this morning. Yes. Just go to him and he wraps his arms around us. Praise the Lord. Yes. Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portal. Praise the Lord. As soon as I find him again. Mine God. <clears throat> Sounds good downstairs. Amen. Yes, it does. It sure does this morning. Amen. Love to hear the babies. Love it. Love the little ones. Bless him, Lord. You hear? Yeah. Here I am, Lord, and I'm drowning. Can you see her forgetfulness? The chains of yesterday surround me. I yearn for peace and rest. I don't want to end up where you found me And it echoes in my mind Keeps me awake tonight I know you've cast my sin as far as The east is from the west And I stand before you now As though I'd never sinned but today I feel like I'm just one mistake away From you leaving me this way Jesus, can you show me just how far the east is from the west? Yes, Lord Cause I can't bear to stand when I've been Come rising up in me again In the arms of your mercy I find rest Cause you know just how far the east is from the west 
from one scarred hand to the other. Yes, thank you, Lord. Glory. Thank you, Lord. I start the day the war begins, endless reminding of my sin. Time and time again, your truth is drowned out by the storm I'm in. Today I feel like I'm just one mistake away from you leaving me this way. Jesus, can you show me just how far the east is from the west? Yes, amen. Because I can't bear to see the man I've been come rising up in me again. In the arms of your mercy I find rest. Because you know just how far the east is from the west. From one scarred hand to the other. Yes. I know you washed me white. Turned my darkness into light. I need Thank your peace you, to get me through. To get me through this night. I can't live by what I feel. But by the truth your word reveals. I'm not holding on to you. But you're holding on to me. You're holding on to me. Jesus, you know just how far the east is from the west. I don't have to see the man I've been rising up in me again. In the arms of your mercy I find rest. Cause you know just how far the east is from the west From one scarred hand to the other Yes, thank you Lord Thank you Lord Thank you Jesus One scarred hand to the other From one scarred hand to the other. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, would you care to do this one? I'm going to do one from my. Uh, I'm going to figure out how to turn this back on. But feeling blessed, and I'm glad I don't have to go back and be the man I was. Praise Amen. the Lord. You had me. Victory in Jesus, I heard the plan this morning. And I wanted to. On 242, if everybody wants to join me, sing the hymn. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I'm out of practice, sorry. Lord, I am. I'm, I'm glad to be back here today. Give him all the praise. I heard it all go story. How the Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. Yes. I heard about his burning, of his precious blood's atoning, and I repented of my sin and won the
family that passed away in Portsmouth today. Yeah. They lay in the rest today. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't remember the name. Do you remember his it's, name? Uh, his first name was Ed. I don't know his last name. Was Ed, 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 was that Ed, Ed who? Mom? The baby. The, the firefighter from Portsmouth that passed away after that fire the other day. We just want to be in, in remembrance for that family. Yes. We had a lot of loss this last week. My nephews lost a couple of buddies. Um, I remember the Tackett and the Lytle families. Yeah. Um, yeah, the teacher from Western. His kids went to Whiteman, so um, be in prayer for that family. I pray for my family and pray for Karen because I'm having a hard time helping her. She's kind of lost in her way right now. Back and forth on things. And she just needs a lot of prayer. Yeah. Ma'am. Remember yeah. Kate's mom? She was admitted in the hospital Friday. She's still in the hospital. So she's <coughs> wanted in prayer. Definitely want to remember Wanda. We we uh we went to a revival the other night and um you know Ryan said remember Erica. I asked you to remember Nicole all the time, but Pastor Randy Peters made a good point. We want to we want to remember our kids, but we want to make sure that we're the one bringing them to God's feet too. We don't want to we don't want to just rely on other people to pray for them. We, we need to make sure we're praying for them ourselves. Yeah. And that's sometimes we get busy with everyday life and forget and whatever. You know, but we need to make sure that we're praying for them ourselves. So And remember our grandbaby, she's been sick and has a virus and um, her mommy and daddy are really 
good at what they're doing, but sometimes we know when you have a new baby, get weary and mm -hmm. just pray for them too. So. This morning, let's uh, pray out together. Joe, do you care to lead us out this morning, no. and we'll just pray together oh, this yeah. morning? Oh, she doesn't move. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this Joe. Sorry. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, once again we come to you, Lord, with yes, with grateful hearts, Lord, and we have a lot of need in each and every person here, Lord. Uh, Lord, for the attack at the and those that are uh, lost loved ones this week, Lord God, I pray that you be with their families as well. And Lord God, each and every one of us that I uplift from here, Lord God, I know that you know the needs of that. Lord God, we were seasoned this morning, Lord God, and you know the desire of us. Our heart to see her healthy and well, Lord God. I pray that you just touch her mortal body. Lord God, be with our revival upcoming, Lord God. I pray that your hand is all, all through it and that you move in a mighty way, Lord God, because I just know that you're up to something, Lord God, and we're willing and able to accept whatever blessings you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for the wonderful children that you've brought to our congregation, Lord God. Thank you, and we ask you to just continue to grow our congregation and be a beacon of light to our community. Lord God, I pray that you just continue to be with each and every one of us. Have us grow, draw closer to you, Lord God. And thank you for Elizabeth Hope coming, Lord God, and sharing. And Lord God, I pray that we just give to them as we see fit. Lord God, we pray that we pour our hearts and our spirit out on you, Lord, this morning, that your word will go out, and Lord God, that hearts will be softened by thy word, and things will happen and stir, and Lord God, get us ready for this revival. Lord, we love you this morning. We thank you, we honor, we praise you, and we are just so grateful for all that you do, and all that you continue to do for our lives. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. <coughs> All right. Is there anybody else that has anything this morning? You have a phone? Awesome. Bless her, Lord. Bless Sharon, Lord. I just want to say that I love the Lord and He blesses me every day. And he has blessed me with beautiful grandchildren. He has. Amen. And I love him. Love him all. And this is just a small little poem that I have this morning. And the title of it is The Key. We are all God's children. That's the way that it should be. Yet there are people in this world that still hate you and me. They go to church on Sunday, but their hearts are still the same. They can, that how they can, how can they not love thy brother and yet they praise God's name? One day it may be too late for those who cannot see. You can't buy your way to heaven for it's love that holds the key. Amen. Amen. That's, that's a big stinger right there. If you heard the, the words of that poem, that's absolutely true. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's uh, one thing Kevin and I have been in prayer about this week, that uh, it's hard to see someone you love get so bent up about, uh, you know, worried about what other people think about them. She should only be worried about what one man thinks of her. Yeah, that's God. And it's been, it's been difficult. And uh, the fact that we keep the phone with her, we, you know, she, she really worries too much about what other people think. And it should be only about what God thinks. Yes, yes. that's you. Yes, right. And, all right, if nobody else has anything, be in prayer for Sister Cheryl. She comes up this morning. Bless her, Lord. Gives us what God's laid on her heart. Sound like the allergies have really gotten to her this week. Yeah, and my hoop and holler and I know it's cold. <laughs> but that's okay because God is strong in my weakness. I am so blessed to be here today. And I, it was a blessing to be there with all those ladies in one line and one accord. It was just, Amen. it was a wonderful experience. <clears throat> and, um, I love it. Um, when we're coming into the Easter season, God 
brought to my attention this scripture. So we're going to go to uh, Matthew chapter 26. Matthew 26, we're going to start in verse 45. It's all right. It's quite all right. Let her holler. I love it. Matthew 26, we're going to start in verse 45. Matthew 26 and 45 says, Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now, and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, uh, Judas one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid their hands on Jesus and took him. Our dearest, precious, and heavenly Father, Father God, we thank you for being here in thy house this morning yet again and being behind thy sacred desk, Lord God. Hide me behind your cross and cover me in your blood. Let this message come forth as you have given it, not as I want, but as you want, Lord God. Let, my ser let me be thy servant. And let me get out of the way so that the real preacher could come. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Imagine, if you will, Jesus had these 12 very close and personal friends. And one of them he knew was going to betray him. You know, we've all could probably say one way or another we've been betrayed by someone. Hi, sweetie. And we've been hurt. But we may not, may or may not have known that was coming. But Jesus, imagine he knew it was coming and he still had to put forth the effort and be who he was in God because he knew it was going to happen. He stood there and allowed it to happen because he knew Judas was coming. He knew he was going to be kissed. And you know, the kiss was that of endearment. And to show that you love that you loved someone when they would come and kiss you on the cheek. So imagine, not only was he betrayed, but he was betrayed with the with the uh, with the kiss that should be because he loved and cared for him. You know, so it was almost like, wow! Not only did you betray him, but he actually pretended to care and have devotion for his master at the same time. You know, there's different, there's different, um, there's different recollections of this in different, in different gospels. But this particular one, I liked where he said, "Friend, wherefore art thou come?" Imagine you're betraying the Lord Jesus Christ, and He still calls you friend. Judas, of all people, who was going to betray Him unto death. He still called him friend. Imagine that. So those of us that are, are, are thinking, well, he can't really love me the way, imagine he still loved Judas. He was betraying him, and he still said, friend, where, wherefore art thou come? And then they came and laid their hands and took Jesus. Wow. That's the God we serve. He still loved him. He still cared about him. And in fact, I, I truly believe that if, if, if Judas would have asked for forgiveness, God would have forgiven him. Jesus would have forgiven him. I do believe that. Because that's the compassion that Jesus has. You know, Judas, Judas not only knew Jesus intimately, but he had watched him. He had heard his teachings. He had saw his compassion for people. He had saw the miracles that had been done. But yet still, 
the devil came into him and he betrayed Jesus. So see, even though we can be as close as we want to be to God, we can still be tempted. We can still be distracted. Yeah. We yeah. can still be brought away from God. Yeah. We're not immune. If even one of the disciples could have been used by the enemy to betray Jesus, don't, don't fall into the trap thinking that you can't be. Because right. none of us are too far away from the fact that we can also be used of the enemy yeah. if we allow ourselves to be right. we have to stay diligent we have to stay with our love and our compassion for jesus you know i told joe i started to watch the passion of the christ and sometimes i just can't even can't even watch it yeah i've only watched it up to the part where they actually went into the garden and they and they got him because when they started to spit in his face i just couldn't watch anymore yeah because I thought, imagine people spitting in God's face, yeah. Yeah. in the face of God. But then God brought to, to me, he said, you know what? But when thou sinned against me, you are still spitting in my face. Yeah. Help us, Lord. Oh, Lord. I said, Lord, don't let me be that. Don't let me go back there. Don't let me be that person that puts that hurt back on you. Yeah. Don't let me put those things on you again. Amen. Don't let me put those lashes on your back again. Amen. Don't let me go, let you go through that hurt and pain through me again, Lord. Please don't allow that to happen. Because I'm telling you what, they didn't realize what they were doing at the time, but there come a time they realized what they had done. But we know once we are saved by the grace of God and by His mercy, we know that if we go back and do the things he saved us from, we might as well have just spit right back in his face. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because he saved us, he loved us, he cared for us, Amen. and yet we still turned our back to him. Well, I don't want us to do that today. I want us to remember this as a good thing. And they came as a large group, and they were individually afraid. You know when large mobs and groups of people come together, individually they probably wouldn't do what it is they're doing. Why? Because they don't have the nerve. But as they gather together, they all get this sense of security and this sense of, of, of being bigger than they were. And that's why they all came because, you know, he'd been in their synagogue. They could have taken him then. But they were afraid. They were afraid of what the people would say. They were afraid of what would happen to them. They came in the dark of night under the cover and the veil of darkness because that's what, that's what the devil does. He comes under the veil of darkness. He doesn't like the light. He came, they came under the veil of darkness as a group, as a mob, to get one man. Why? Because they knew that in the cover of light, that they would be the ones that people would be upset with. They knew that if they did it in the middle of the night, not as many people would know that it was going on, and they could maybe get away with it. They were only supposed to arrest the one man, and they didn't know who they were going after exactly. Because if you notice in Scripture, God would do, Jesus would do miracles, and then he would just just ran himself into the crowd. A lot of times they didn't even know who, what he looked like. He did that on purpose. He didn't want to be known for that. He just wanted to do things for people. That's how he is still today. He doesn't need our accolades. He doesn't need for people to say he is this or he is that. He just wants us to follow him. He just wants us to love him. He doesn't want to be up on a pedestal. He just wants us to follow him. He wants us to be one of his. Yeah. That's all he wants from us. He doesn't want to be somebody special. He just wants to be the Lord of our life. Amen. And the best friend we've ever had. Amen. The darkness that hides the things from God. But God knew all of this was to take place. See, they thought they were sneaky. They thought going to Judas and, and, and getting him to, to betray God, to betray Jesus, that they were sneaky and they were doing all these things underhandedly. But let me tell you something. God was well aware and so was Jesus. That's why he wouldn't pray. 
That's why we prayed and said, if this cup shall pass for me, but if not, thy will, not mine, be done. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because he knew what had to happen. And imagine knowing what was to come. And he still did that for us. He knew all of these things were going to come to pass, and he still did it for us. You know, he could have at any time, we were talking about that on the way to church this morning, God could have not allowed Judas to betray him. God could have said when they got there, you know, he could have mulled them all down with a big lightning bolt, and none of that ever could have happened. Right. But he allowed all of these things to happen. Why? Because he knew that his gift of salvation had to come to pass. Yeah. It had to be there so that us, we, the sinner people, could find our way to his kingdom. Right. And we love him for that this morning. Jesus knew who they were and what they were coming for. He just <laughs> knew it. Before, he could ever, before they could ever get there, he knew they were coming. He knew all of it. And he stood there. He stayed there. You know, imagine, I don't think me and my human frailty, if I knew that was coming, I don't think I could stand there and know that that was coming and, and be as calm and collected as Jesus was, knowing those were going to happen to him, what was going to happen. You know, in my human frailty, I know for a fact I wouldn't have that nerve and resolve. But isn't it great that Jesus had that nerve and resolve for us? That he loved us that much. That he wanted to go there and do those things for us. And pretend, the, the kids that pretended to love and, and devotion. I mean, that's the saddest part about the whole situation with Judas is that he loved him. Jesus loved him just like all the rest. He knew when he picked him, I'm sure, that he was going to be the one and he still loved him. He still shared all of his heart and his soul and his stories and his teachings with him just like the rest of them because he loved him. He loved him and he still loves each and every one of us. No matter how far we went, what we've done, where we've been, he still loves us. That's what's wonderful about Jesus. You know, had he not chose to do this, none of us could be sitting here this morning. None of us would want to sit here this morning. None of us would know the story of Jesus because there would be no story. But thank God there is a story. Thank God he went through with it. Thank God he went through all of that for us. You know, it is sad to think about all of the things that they did to him, but he did that for us. What a gift. What a gift that he gave that to us. What an amazing gift. He was betrayed by one of his own, but you know what? He is one of all of us because we are all made in his likeness and his image. So it wasn't just he was betrayed by one of his own, but he could be betrayed by anybody because, let me tell you something, we're all made in God's image. Yes, we are. We are all created Amen. uniquely and wonderfully made by God. Amen. We're all uniquely and wonderfully made by God. Can you imagine? Thank you, Lord. And the things that happened after this are not are not a wonderful thing. You know, he knew he was going through all these things. He knew he was going to be beaten. He knew he was going to be mocked. He knew he was going to be scorched. He knew all of that. And yet still, he walked through all of that for you and for me. He walked through that knowing... But what is the greatest part of it is he knew that Friday was coming, Amen. but Sunday was also coming. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. And praise God he knew that was coming. Yeah. And praise God somebody was godly inspired to write it down so that we would know all about what he went through yeah. for us. And all the things that he did for us. And all the wonderful things that we can get out of that. Amen. And that we can use to tell our children, yes. The Easter story is the fact that our God is still alive. Amen. Our God is alive. Yes. yes, they tried to kill him. Yes, they tried to take him out. But let me tell you something. Our God is not dead. He is yes. alive yes. today. Amen. And he is here to show us yes. that even though Friday, went, Friday came and it was a dark Friday, boy, when Sunday came. 
I cannot wait for the day where I can say thank you, Lord, for what you did for us. Probably won't be able to say a word except fall on my face in front of him. But in my heart, I'm going to be so grateful for all the things that he did. Because we should all be grateful for this Easter season. You know, the best part about being a Christian, I think, after I got saved was I, I Easter was my favorite. Why? Because the tomb is empty. Because we know what he did for us. Because we actually can sense it and feel it. You know, those that are out there, when they talk about Easter, it's bunnies and candy and eggs and all these things. But you know what? They don't know about Jesus. And that's a sad thing. Because Jesus is the reason for the Easter season. And we're so grateful that he did the things that he did for us. We love him so much today. And I am so grateful that I am able to say that I know the true Easter story. And that I'm able to share it with people. Because I love him so much. I'm so grateful for him this morning. And I'm grateful that we have a congregation of people who know that story. And can enjoy that story. And right in the middle of the Easter season, the beginning of the Easter season, we're having a revival. How awesome is that? Because I have a feeling God has more in store than we can ever imagine. We can ever imagine. I believe there's going to be people come seeking him through this revival. I'm praying that it's so. Because this Easter season is a powerful one. Why? They all are, Pastor. Yes, they are. But in the world and the condition that it's in right now, the Lord needs to touch our families and friends more so now than ever. Those that are outside of this ark of safety, God needs to get a hold of some people. And I'm praying that when this revival opens up on Friday night, we're going to see souls coming in that are seeking God. Amen. Souls that are coming in, they know they need something from God. They know they need Him. That's what we want for this revival. But in this revival season, just remember, it all started with that kiss. <laughs> that kiss of betrayal. So if you ever think that, you know, how could they do that to me? How could they do this or that to me? Just think about the fact that poor Jesus was betrayed by one of his very best friends. We're not immune to that either. Anything that God went through, don't think you're immune. Because if they could do it to Jesus, they could do it to all of us. But we are just so grateful this morning that God allowed himself, allowed himself to be taken for the crucifixion. Because without the cross and without the shedding of his blood, none of us would be able to make it to heaven. But thank God. That he decided that it was worth it. That you were worth it. That I was worth it. That everybody that's out there is worth it. I so believe that God is going to make a mighty move in this revival. Amen. I'm praying it. I just feel it in my spirit. I know he's up to something. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I am so grateful that God gives us the opportunity to have a revival in the midst of his Easter season. That just warms my spirit because I just know he's up to something. Love the Lord this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And if any of you need to pray this morning, we can certainly pray. But that's all God gave me this morning to give to you because I don't like to move on and, and babble when God is done. Because when God is done, he's done. You know, somebody says, well, pastor, really short short and sweet. Well, sometimes I am because that's what God gives me. And I only want to give you what he gives me. I want to give you what Cheryl gives you because it won't make a difference. But what God has for us, that's what goes out and doesn't come back void. What God has for us, that's what moves in our lives. That's what changes lives is what God has for people. Not what a preacher has. Not what, not what somebody can say about the word of God. But what God has to say to us is what is most important. But if anybody has anything that you don't want to, don't leave here with it this morning. In fact, if you want to prepare for this uh, revival season, now's the time. Let's just lay our friends and family on the altar this morning. Those that we expect to see here Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Let's just lay them all out here. I've been praying for my kids all week. 
Some of them don't even live in the state. That doesn't mean they can't be in a church somewhere. Amen. You know, God can make a way. I, I might get a call and say, I went to church on Sunday. I'd be hooting and hollering, you yeah. know, because God can. Amen. So I'm going to be out here laying my friends and family on the altar. If anybody else wants to, that's more. you're more than welcome. But we're all welcome to come. 